Hello my dear students, this is Dr. Shabana Begum, Associate Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bangalore, presenting a lecture on the positive interspecific interactions under session 10, which is a subtopic under community ecology pertaining to BSc Zoology 5th semester under the paper entitled Environmental Biology and Ethology. Students, in my previous lecture, I had discussed about the negative interspecific interactions such as antibiosis, competition, predation and parasitism, where one or both the individuals are harmed. Such interactions are not harmful to the entire species or population. Only the individuals interacting may be harmed. And these interactions are also called antagonism. And these are necessary to keep a check on the population. Today, I am going to discuss about the positive interspecific interactions such as commensalism, proto-cooperation and mutualism. So, the content of this topic is to know about the positive interactions, the mutualism and its types, commensalism and the types and the learning objectives being to understand the various types of positive interactions between organisms of different species such as mutualism, proto-cooperation and commensalism. A small introduction to this topic. Biological interactions are the effects that the organisms in a community have on one another. In the natural world, no organism exists in absolute isolation and thus every organism must interact with the environment and other organisms. Food chains and food webs are used to describe interactions between organisms according to what they eat. However, there are other interspecific interactions that affect populations within a community. So, the populations help one another and either one or both the species are benefited in case of positive interactions. This benefit may be in respect of food, shelter, substratum or transport and the association may be continuous or transitory. Obligate or facultative and the two partners may be in close contact or one of them may live within a specific area of the other or attached to its surface. So many positive interactions take place in an ecosystem in which organisms live in symbiosis. A beneficial ecological relationship between two or more organisms living in direct contact with each other. Once again you say the positive interactions are cooperative relationships between species that result in better growth, reproduction and survival for at least one species involved in the interaction without negatively affecting the other species. The positive interactions are of two types, mutualism and commensalism. Mutualism is again divided into two subtypes, the first one being symbiosis or obligate mutualism and the second is the proto-cooperation or facultative mutualism. While the commensalism is again divided into three subtypes, the first one being inquilinism, second is foraci, third is metabiosis. Once again, you can say in mutualism, all species interacting with one another will get benefit. Mutualism is an interaction in which both organisms benefit from the relationship. There are two common types of mutualism, symbiotic or obligate mutualism, the second being facultative mutualism. 
An obligate mutualist is an organism that must have its partner in order to survive. A facultative mutualist is an organism that can survive on its own but for which there is an added benefit if it remains with another organism. Symbiotic mutualism is of two types. Viz. The mutualism with continuous contact and the association may be between plant and plant, plant and animal or animal and animal. Some examples for plant and plant associations are the lichens. So a classical example of this type is furnished by lichens. These are composed of fungus matrix containing algal cells. In this consortium, that is association, the fungus provides moisture and other minerals and also provides shelter to the algae. While the algae synthesizes complex organic molecules by photosynthesis to be utilized by both the partners. Neither of the two can grow alone independently in nature. Hence, the association is permanent and obligatory. The next example is the symbiotic nitrogen fixers. The bacterium rhizobium forms nodules in the roots of leguminous plants and leaves symbiotically with the host. The bacteria obtain food from the higher plants and in turn fix gaseous nitrogen making it available to the plant. The examples for plant and animal association. So here are uh, the first one being a turbellarian worm called Convoluta roscofensis which is a marine flatworm with, and it leaves in association with green algae called Zuclorella. The worm does not possess Zuclorella at the time of hatching and the type of nutrition is holozoic. Later, it acquires Zuclorella. Its organs of nutrition degenerates since the worm gets plenty of food from Zuclorella. The turbellarian provides shelter, nitrogenous food material and carbon dioxide to green algae and they in turn provide oxygen and carbohydrates to the turbellarian. Next example is the association between algae and members of animals like sponges, cylindrates, mollusks, etc. The algae receives shelter and nutrition inside the bodies of these animals and in turn the animals get oxygen and synthetic compounds from the algae. For example, the green algae which are found in the endodermal cells of Hydra viridis. Yet another example is the mutualistic association between acacia plants and the ants that live on them. The plants provide food and accommodation in the form of food and nectar as well as hollow thorns which can be used as nests. The ants return this favor by protecting the plants against herbivores. The next example is the association between the fig trees and the pollinating species of wasp. So a green fig species can be pollinated only by its partner wasp species. The female wasp not only uses the fruit for laying eggs but also uses the developing seeds within the fruit for nourishing its larva. The wasp in turn pollinates the fig inflorescence. You can please have a closer look at the beautiful pictures which depict the type of association between the organisms. 
Now the examples for animal and animal association. So here the first example is ox peckers and zebras or rhinos. In this relationship the ox pecker that is a bird leaves on the zebra or rhino sustaining itself by eating all of the bugs and parasites on the animal. In this association, the bird benefits by having a readily available source of food and the zebra or rhino benefits from having the bugs removed. Also, when there is a danger to the zebra or the rhino, the ox picker flies high and makes much noise in order to alert nearby animals to the impending danger from the predator. Yet another example is the association between a protozoa and termites. So it is the most interesting example of mutualism which is found between termites and intestinal protozoan flagellates called trichonymphs. The termites feed on wood but they cannot digest cellulose food without the flagellates. If the flagellates are separated from the termites, they cannot digest food and die within 10 to 20 days. The flagellates in turn get protection, moisture and continuous supply of food in the intestine of termites. So second type of mutualism is mutualism without continuous contact. The example for this being the sea animals and clownfish. So clownfishes are often found living amongst the tentacles of sea animal. While those tentacles are able to sting nearly all other fish, the clownfish thanks to the mucus on its skin is protected from the stinging. In this relationship, the clownfish has a safe place to live and the sea animals are saved by the clownfish from being eaten by their predators, that is the butterfly fish. So this is the example for facultative mutualism. The association here is between the orchid flower and bumblebees. So here the petals of the Mediterranean orchid, Ophrys, resembles the female bee in size, color and marking. The male bee gets attracted to this petal and pseudocopulates with this petal and in the process gets itself dusted with the pollen. When this bee repeats this process with another flower, it pollinates the flower. And this is an example of coevolution. So now, some examples for non obligatory mutualism or facultative mutualism, which is also called as proto-cooperation. In fact, it is a positive interspecific interaction in which both the partners are mutually benefited and increase the chance of their survival. However, the interaction is not obligatory for their survival as both can live without this interaction. For example, the crocodile bird, Pluvianis, Egyptius enters the mouth of the crocodile and feed on parasitic leeches which are stuck in their teeth. By this, the bird gets food and the crocodile gets rid of blood sucking parasites that is the leeches. The association between hermit crab and sea anemone is yet another example for 
facultative mutualism. Here, the sea anemone provides camouflage to hermit crab and in turn is transported to new feeding places. Usually, the sea anemones are found attached to the empty gastropod shells in which leaves the hermit crab. The crab is protected by the sea anemone from the enemies by the powerful stinging cells called nematocysts. In turn, sea anemone is given free transportation from one place to another by hermit crab so that the sea anemone has changed of feeding grounds. Moreover, whenever the crab feeds, particles of food that are floating are utilized by the sea anemone. Very interesting example of facultative mutualism is between the ant and the aphids. So aphids are sucking insects that are common on both outdoor and indoor plants. They feed on the sap of plants and secrete a substance called honeydew. This sti sticky resin is a favorite food of ants who actually milk the aphids for it by stroking their abdomen. The relationship between aphids and ants is symbiotic in that both receive some benefit from the arrangement. The unique relationship between these two organisms provides protection for the aphids and food for the ants. The ants protect the aphids from predators such as lacewings and ladybugs. They have also recently been found to protect the aphids from a fungal outbreak that causes death by removing the bodies of the infected aphids. Any time you see a large number of ants on a tree or plant, it is likely you have a large infestation of aphids. Not all species of ant find this arrangement beneficial, but many of the more common species do indeed form aphids in this way. So in the slide, the information is provided. Ant protection of aphids where Aphids trade sugar-rich honeydew in return for defense against predators such as ladybugs. Let's move to the next positive interspecific interaction called commensalism. So, in this type of association, one individual or species is benefited, whereas the other is neither benefited nor harmed. The word com commensalism means eating off the same table or sharing the same table. The two or more populations live together without entering into a kind of physiological exchange. Some of the examples for common salism are the association between the sucker fish and the shark. The sucker fish has its dorsal fin modified as sucker with the help of which it attaches, attaches itself to the bodies of sharks, whales, etc. So that sucker fish gets free transportation effortlessly. The attachment is only temporary and the fish detaches itself and swims in search of food later. So the sucker fish gets protection from predators whereas it has no effect on sharks. Several kinds of fishes live among the stinging tentacles of physalia without any danger from physalia. These small fishes get protection from predator fishes from the stinging cells of physalia.
another example for the common salism are the epiphytes like mosses orchids ferns money plants which grow on the trunk of other trees they do not harm the tree but just grow to get better sunlight one more example is the egret and the grazing cattle the egret feeds on the insects found in the vegetation that the cattle graze upon when the cattle graze on the vegetation it stirs and flushes out the insects hidden in the vegetation which is otherwise difficult for the egret bird to find and catch similarly common salism is exhibited between sea anemone and clownfish that leaves near the mouth the fish gets protection from the predators because of the stinging tentacles found in the sea anemone now let's learn about the types of common salism one by one the first one being inclinism this is an association between members of two different species in which one that is the inquilin leaves on or in the other or inside the host home obtaining shelter and in some instances taking some of the host food the second type of common salism is called foresi is an association in which one animal clings to another to ensure movement from place to place as some mites use some insects here some of the mites are covered here the body of the insect that is a beetle is covered over by means of a number of mites so they make use of it for the movement from place to place so the third type of common salism is called metabiosis and it happens when one organism creates a habitat for another organism to use as in the case when dead gastropods leave their shells behind which are used by hermit crabs as homes summary of interaction so species interactions within ecological webs include four main types of two way interactions mutualism commensalism competition and predation because of the many linkages among species within a food web changes to one species can have far reaching effects the table here depicts the type of interaction the description and the effect the association has on the two partners so first one being competition where the organisms of two species use the same limited resource and have a negative impact on each other the effect being both are equally harmed so that is negative effect next is the predation here a member of one species the predator eats all or part of the body of a member of another species that is the prey and the effect is called a positive negative that is beneficial to one partner and harmful to the other partner herbivory is a special case of predation in which the prey species is a plant this is also a plus minus interaction where one species is benefited the other one is harmed mutualism is a long term close association between two species in which both partners benefit this is a beneficial interaction hence the effect is positive for both common salism is a long term close association between two species in which one benefits and the other is unaffected that's why the effect is called beneficial that is plus or advantages and the other one is the effect is zero that means neutral parasitism is a long term close association between two species in which one benefits and the other is harmed 
it is also like the predation a plus minus relationship where one organism will benefit the other one is negatively benefited that means it is negative effect will be negative positive negative so finally the outcome of the study here the inter and intraspecific interactions they are important drivers of distribution patterns local community assemblies and evolutionary changes the outcome of interspecific interactions are not simply plus zero or minus but instead vary along a continuum mutualistic relationships leading to positive interspecific interactions wherein both organisms can benefit from the interaction mutualisms are often contingent upon external factors such as the availability of limiting resources or the presence or density of a predator or competitor in common cellism two species have a long term interaction that is beneficial to one and has no positive or negative effect on the other they benefit by getting shelter and nutrients and have no obvious helpful or harmful effect on them so with this i will conclude my lecture and before that to know whether you have followed the lesson or not i want you to answer few multiple choice questions which are as follows the first question being dash is when two or more species live in close association the options are a predation b competition c symbiosis and d is food wear can you guess the answer so the answer is option c symbiosis next question name the species interaction where a bee and flower both benefit from their relationship the options are a common cellism b mutualism c parasitism and d is competition so the answer is option b mutualism next question name the species interaction where a decorator crab camouflages itself with sponges sponges are unaffected the options are a competition b predation c commensalism and d is mutualism so the answer is the option c which is the commensalism one more question commensalism is a relationship where options are a one is harmed one benefits b both organisms benefit c one benefits one is unharmed and d is one dies one gets energy of food the answer is option c one benefits one is unharmed next question evidence shows that some grasses benefit from being grazed which of the following terms would best describe this plant herbivore interaction options are a mutualism b commensalism c parasitism and d is competition the answer being answer being option a that is mutualism next question mutualism is found in dash a hermit crab and sea anemone b oxpecker and rhinos c zooclorella and hydra and d e coli and man so answer is option a hermit crab and sea anemone the seventh question the interacting species a and b live closely together in options are a predation parasitism and competition b is mutualism competition and amensalism 
C is predation, competition and commensalism and D being predation, parasitism and commensalism. The answer is option D that is the predation, parasitism and commensalism. Ants and acacia trees have a mutualistic relationship because options are they both benefit from living with each other. B. They are part of the same ecosystem. C. They are both adapted to a humid climate. And D. Is the ants eat part of the acacia tree. So the answer is option A. They both benefit from living with each other. Association of sucker fish and shark is A. Parasitism B. Commensalism C. Symbiosis and D. Is amensalism So the answer is option B. That is commensalism Finally here are few references for you to go through for further understanding of the topic. Thank you.